All right, review packet three, surface area 10, volume 20 problems. And of course, you knew if you're getting them right or not because the answers were right there on the packet for you. Don't you wish the final was going to be like that? It's not. Um, I'm just gonna run through. I did have some people come to study session and ask a couple questions. Uh, so good for you. I'm glad uh, glad you did, and I hope it was helpful. But um, didn't you know nobody really submitted any through email or or classroom or anything like that. So I'm just gonna run through and let you look at the work. You can freeze uh, the frame if you need to. Um, uh, the surface area of a sphere. It's four pi r squared in the radius. Don't put 24 in for the radius, right? That's a diameter. 12 is the radius. Uh, follow order of operations and you'll be fine. Um, it's possible the answer will be in terms of pi. It's also possible that it won't be. And if it's if there's no pi, you know they probably multiplied by 3.14. So be prepared to go either direction. Uh, volume of a sphere, four thirds pi r. And of course, that would be cubed. So, uh, Make sure you don't uh, accidentally square the radius. Some people write cubed, but then still square it. It turns out to be 144 here instead of 1728. So um, make sure you uh, remember your, your formulas, pay attention to details, and do what you write that you're going to do. Number two, uh, for a cube, well, that's just made of you know six simultaneous or six uh, congruent squares, right? They're all the same. So. Um, you know, whatever 13 times 13 is, there's six of them. So six times 169, the volume is base times height where the base is a square and the height is also um, the um, the same edge, the same 13. Uh, of course, you could also write this as, uh, as cubed. That's kind of, I think, a, oh, I guess it would be a postulate. It might've been one of our postulates that the volume of a cube is S cubed. Okay, so same thing though, either way. Um, whether you do 13 squared times 13 or 13 cubed, um, there's, your, there's your volume. Uh, number three, regular prism. So the the base is a regular polygon, so that's going to be ASN over 2, ASN over 2 for the base. And um, the perimeter would be five times the, uh, the edge. And so there is your surface area. Volume would be uh, base times height, so ASN over two, or one half, um, one half ASN times the height. And uh, once again, we'll plug in the apothem, 6.9, the uh, side length 10, the number of sides for a pentagon five. And um, there you go. Uh, number four, a triangular uh, pyramid, not a regular triangular pyramid. And so this is a this would be a lot trickier if we wanted to, to try to find the, uh, the surface area because all the bases of the triangles would be different and all the slant heights, you know, all these slant heights would be a little different, which is why we didn't ask you to find it. You could, if you wanted to use some trigonometry and spend a little time with it, but we just asked you to find the volume, which is base times height. Oh, there is a point I see. So I must divide by three and this doesn't say divide by three. What a cop out that says divide by two. Let's fix that real quick. Typo. All right. Um, so there's the divide by three. Uh, the base is one and a half base times height. Uh, and then the height of the pyramid is given as 66. So plug your numbers in. Uh, make sure you pick the correct uh, side down here, right? You got to you got a 38, you got a uh, an 88, you got a 69. Which one of those? Which one of those is the correct uh, base? Well, the, the the height they gave you is perpendicular to the side that's 88. So make sure you choose the right base. And we did. And um, there's your answer. Number five, triangular prism this time. So instead of a triangular pyramid, we have two bases, two triangular bases. Uh, the base of a triangle, of course, is... Um, just one half base times height, right? But but we're we're missing um, one of the sides of the triangle, and unfortunately, that would let me use these um, this perpendicular relationship for base and height. But I don't have it. Oh no! But I do have the the, the hypotenuse 17, so I could use the Pythagorean theorem, or I could recognize my 8, 15, 17 primitive. Um, so 8 times 15 will be your base and height. The, 
perimeter would be 8 plus 15 plus 17. The height of the uh, prism is 14. So there's your surface area. Volume is just base times height. Um, so back to 1 half times 8 times 15. Um, but then uh, multiply by the 14 going up. Once again, remember, freeze these if you need to take a look at the work longer. Uh, trapezoidal prism. So we're doing base times height again for the volume, right? Uh, for the surface area, we'll do two bases um, plus the perimeter times the height again. So prisms are going to have the same formula, but remember, uh, when it gets down to this B, it's different. On the last problem, it was one half base times height because it was a triangle. But on this problem, it's going to be uh, base one plus base two divided by two um, multiplied by the height divided by two because it's uh, a trapezoid. So. Uh, keep your area formulas in mind. So there it is, one half base one plus base two times height, or base one plus base two times height divided by two. Uh, we notice these twos right here, you know, the two and the one half are going to cancel. And we could, um, we could very easily just cancel those uh, out and have the, uh, you know, the, the remaining, um, I guess it would be 56 times 12. However, I did not do that. I uh, I knew I was going to need that base again down on the, the bottom part. So I decided I would actually simplify the, the 1 half um, times 23 plus 33 times 12 and figure out what the area of one base was so that I could use it down below. By the way, uh, some people were curious about how we were finding this height right here, or the height of the trapezoid, and that's a good question. So why don't we look at that really quickly? Luckily, it's an isosceles trapezoid. So what that means is when I cut these heights down, it's going to cut each of these edges congruently, which means that 33, right? 33 minus 23 is the top base. This is 10, so I would have a 5, okay, that wasn't a good 5, I would have a 5 here and a 5 here, uh, but remember, this was already 13, wasn't it, and so I have a 5 and a 13, oh, the other leg would be a 12, uh, you could also use the Pythagorean theorem, obviously, uh, if you wanted to, but uh, we saw some like that, you know, all the way back in, um, in uh, chapters uh 11 for area and then for 12 for surface area we have seen problems like that before uh, so anyway uh, add your add your two uh, things together remember you could always piece these apart too you could say oh I'm going to do a, re a trapezoid I'm going to double it because there's two of them and then there's oh there's uh, four rectangles so I'll add those up uh, individually you know 13 times 44 23 times 44 and you get the same answer if you if you did it piece by piece so that's always your option um so we already found the area of the base uh, was uh, 336. The height is the distance between the bases, right? Which is 44. So there's your uh, there's your volume. Uh, number seven is a cone. So uh, the uh, the surface area is, is the base, which is a circle. So pi r squared plus the lateral surface, which is, if you unrolled it, it would be a a sector, pi times r times the slant height. And um, the only thing I don't know is the radius. So luckily, I, I have the height and the slant height, and that makes a right triangle. This is actually a primitive where um, 11 is what you get for that short leg. So I plug my numbers in. I follow order of operations. And 792 pi would be the exact value. Volume, um, base times height. But then uh, you know there is a point I see. So that means I better remember to divide by three, right? And um, once again, pi uh, 11 squared, the height this time, not the slant height, but the height is 60, and then divided by three. Uh, number eight um, is a, uh, a regular hexagonal uh, prism, two bases, right? And so I need to find the area of that base. The, the height of the prism is 78. Remember, height doesn't necessarily mean straight up and down because uh, the bases may not be at the top and the bottom. So you got to really know where the bases are before you determine what your height is. So the height is 78. Um, a regular polygon is uh, ASN over, uh, over 2. Or because they gave me the perimeter, you know, I'll use that shortcut formula um, 
the apothem times perimeter over two. Because remember, number of sides times the length of each side is the is the perimeter. Um, so there's my formula, and I, I know the apothem is 22.5, and I know the perimeter is um, 156, and I know that the height um, of the uh, prism is 78. So there's really not much to do here other than throw everything in. Now this is a famous type of problem, though, where, where maybe they don't give you everything you need to know. They could have easily not given you the um, the apothem. And remember, with hexagons, here's the uh, here's the magic. You ready? Because of the hexagon in, in 360 divided by 6, because we get 6 triangles in a hexagon, it only works with hexagon, um, we would get uh, 60 degrees per triangle vertex angle, which makes not just isosceles triangles, but actually equilateral triangles. Remember this old trick? When we, uh, we divided it up and we got the 30, 60, 90s, and so if the length of the side was S, so like on ours, you know, the length of the side would be whatever 156 divided by 6 was. Um, I suppose that would be mm, 36. I think that would be 36. So half of that would be 18. So one half of S would be the short leg. Multiply that by root 3. So, um, you know, you'd have 18 uh, uh, root 3 for your apothem. Which I bet they approximated it pretty close to get that 22.5. Um, but anyway, that's a little trick we learned back in chapters 11 and 12 and used it quite a bit. Uh, volume is just base times height. We already found the base, didn't we? The base was that one half AP, which uh, we noticed that we're, you know, we're putting the same thing here for the base um, that we put here. And then the height was 78. So bam, times uh, 78, and there's your answer there. Uh, number nine was probably the hardest problem um, regarding uh, surface area because there were three surfaces. You had a circle around the bottom, so that's a pi r squared. You had a, a lateral surface around the uh, the cylinder, which remember when you unwrap a cylinder, you get a rectangle that, that has a, a base that's equal to the circumference, so that's two pi r, and then the height of the of the thing, so two pi r h, and then and then the, the lateral surface of the cone is pi r l, remember the, the slant height pi r l. And so you can't just do the area of the um, of the cylinder plus the area of the cone because what happens is when you put them together, the bottom of the cone and the top of the cylinder disappear. They don't become surfaces anymore. And that was a, a mistake that many, 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 many of you made back in uh, chapter 12. And uh, you know you definitely want to avoid that. Um, we pretty much have everything we need. Now, the, the height of the, the cone, we need, we need to get that through subtraction. You know, 64 minus 44 is 20, right? And then uh, this is a, a right triangle to get the radius. Um, it, it is a multiple of the 3, 4, 5. So you could have got that pretty easily. But once you have these numbers, you're just plugging them in and spit them out, follow order of operations, and it goes pretty quickly. The, the volume is much easier because the volume really is just the cylinder plus the cone. So pi r. Notice how I put an h1 and an h2 because the height of the cylinder is different from the height of the cone. So I uh, had to distinguish between those. 44 for the height of the cylinder and only 20 for the height of the cone. Uh, once again, remember, freeze it and pick the pieces apart if you need to. Number 10 was the area of a, a hemisphere. You know, when we did the area of a um, sector, we did the whole circle. We multiplied it by the fraction of the circle we had. Uh, this is really the same thing. We're going to take the entire hemisphere, which is two-thirds um, pi r cubed. That's the whole thing. But but I only have a fraction of it, so I'm going to multiply by the fraction I have. Now, a lot of people are going to plug the 90 in because that's what they see. But you got to remember, the 90 is what's missing. So what we actually have is the 270. And um, I'll let you look at the rest of the work there um, to get the answer. I noticed a little cancel with the fractions there. The threes canceled. Um, but on your calculator, it probably isn't any easier to, to do that. Um, all right, let's uh, do the last 10 here, and then we'll be done. So 11, we've got a regular heptagonal, right? Seven sides heptagonal-based uh, pyramid. Uh, for a pyramid, we're doing one base plus a whole bunch of triangles. Um, you can put those triangles together with the formula one half perimeter of the base times the slant height. 
slight problem. We don't have the slant height. So if we take the apothem, which they gave us is 14.5 and the true height, which uh, was 33, we get this, we get this triangle down here and then uh, using the Pythagorean theorem, we can figure out the slant height it is about, oh, it's some crazy number, like 36.05, I think, yeah. So plug them in, follow order of operations, and there you go. The uh, volume is uh, base times height. Oh, wait, I see a point. Do you see a point? There's a point I see. So we better remember to divide by three. Um, the base um, ASN, uh, over two or one half ASN, the height 33 divided by three. We've already found the one half ASN up here, didn't we? It was like uh, 710.5. Um, but if we throw it all in the calculator, it'll spit out the right answer. So there you go, 7,815.5. Uh, number 12, a basically it's half of a cylinder. Um, so for the surface area, we're going to take two half circles. Now you could really put those together as, as full circles because um, the, uh, the the area, right? Uh, the I guess arc measure 180 over 360 is half of a circle, but two times one half gets you right back to the full circle, basically. So however you want to organize it. Um, but then we also have the lateral surface. Uh, which is not um, not two pi r times uh, the height because we only have half of the circumference, so it's really only pi r. And there's the one half lateral, but once again, it's just going to turn into pi r h. And then when we took off the other lateral surface, we created a new surface on the bottom. It's just a big long rectangle, which is the diameter of the circle, right? Two radii, eleven plus eleven is twenty-two, and then multiplied by the height of the uh, the figure which is um, 37. So that's, those are the four pieces you would get in this case. And um, then you just have to follow order of operations. The volume's a little bit easier. You could either just do one half of the cylinder, so one half pi r squared times height, or um, you could set it up as a sector. So 180 over 360 times pi r squared, then multiplied by height. But either way, you're gonna get one half of the volume of the cylinder, and you can see that. Uh, in blue right there. Um, number 13, working backwards. Uh, this is a rectangular prism, so base times height multiplied by the height of the prism. The height of the prism was eight. The, the, the base was 17 by X, right? So uh, 17 times eight is 136 divided by 136. There's your answer. Uh, number 14, it's a trapezoidal pyramid. I think the biggest thing on this one is I see a point. Is there a point you see? Then don't forget to divide by three. Um, but uh, base one plus base two times height over two is the area of the base, and then it gave us the height at 36. So we just really have to work backwards here. I think what I did um, is I, you know, I said that 18, eight over two, eight over two is four, and I said 36 over three is 12. And then I just figured that 4 times 12 was 48. So that's where that 48 comes from, is just simplifying and multiplying. So we, I divided by 48. And then I, uh, the last step, I subtracted 15. So 22 uh, meters, it looks like we're in. 22 meters for that one. Um, number 15 was a, uh, was a sphere, very similar to a problem that we did in the examples on the front page. 4 thirds pi r cubed, not squared, right? Um, what do we know? Well, we know the uh, we know that the volume is 4,096 pi. We know that the um, uh, the radius is what we're solving for. They're calling it x. Uh, we know that these pi's right here, right? These pi's are going to cancel, so that's going to simplify things down a little bit. And then to get rid of the 4 thirds, we'll multiply by the reciprocal of 4 thirds, 3 fourths. It would be lovely if 3072 was a perfect cube, but it's not. Um, and so our approximate value is about 14.5 is what that works out to be. Number 16, um, cylinder is pi r squared times height um, to get the volume. Uh, we have the height is 32, but we sure don't have the radius, do we? So let's plug the volume in they gave us. Um, let's cancel those pi's out. Uh, we know that those are going to go away. 
um, then we can divide both sides by, uh, you know, by 32. And then 169 is a perfect square. So we'll take that and it's, uh, looks like it's uh, 13. So if 13 is the radius, that's not your answer though, is it? Because they wanted, it looks like the diameter. Always know what you're looking for in the end. Otherwise, especially in multiple choice um, or, you know, selected response like, like you've been taking. Uh, you'll get tricked into an answer that looks good when it's not really what they wanted. 26 would have been your final answer there. Um, a triangular pyramid, uh, or I'm sorry, prism, triangular prism. So base times height, the base is uh, one half uh, times base times height, right? Or base times height over two. Um, so the base is 24 of the triangle. We don't know the height of the triangle, but the height of the prism is 11. And so I, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the two numbers I knew plus the volume they gave me. Um, one half times 24 is 12 times 11 is 132. And when you divide it out, you're done. X, which is the um, the leg of the, the, the triangular base there that's going up. The height of the triangle is 9. 18. Um, the volume of a uh, cone is pi r squared. Um, times height, and then, oh my goodness, I see a point. Do you see a point? Me too, so we better remember to divide by three. Boop, 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 boop. Um, what do we know? Well, we know the volume, and we know that the radius is not 16, but it's eight. So it looks like the only thing I don't know is the height, which is what they're asking for, right? So let's plug in what we know, cancel ourselves some pies, probably multiply each side by three here um, is what I would do and then um, divide by 64. There you go, 18, um, 18 feet would be the height of your cone. And um, number 19 was asking about an irregular uh, object. So this time we don't have a formula for it. Uh, they are putting it into a cylindrical tank though. And so we know that the, the height uh, or the volume of a cylinder is base times height or pi r squared for the base and, and the height. Um, I wasn't really sure what kind of a regular shaped object they were talking about. Uh, I figured, you know, maybe Kim Kardashian. So maybe we throw Kim Kardashian in and blue, 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 blue. And it raises, it looks like 3.5 um, centimeters. So uh, the radius was 16, so pi times 16 squared. And then the, the big thing here is don't use 24 for the height. That would give us the height of the entire uh, amount, not just the height of the displacement right here. And so we want to use that 3.5 um, for the, uh, the correct height, right? Um, the rest of it's just fall in order of operations. Looks like uh, Kim Kardashian had a volume of uh, 2,000. 813.44 cubic centimeters. So, if that was irregular enough for you. Um, the last problem, I think, was a density problem. So, we know density is mass over volume. And gave us the mass so you know that was I guess vaguely uh, generous of them so density is mass over volume and they gave us the mass at 3,000 grams what's the volume well the volume is going to have to be done through dis displacement we put it into a cube um, so uh, like a cube container uh, Um, it tells us that the, uh, the cube is 42 on each side. So we'll go ahead and write our, uh, you know, our 42s in. And when we put this irregularly shaped object in, uh, this time, which I don't, I don't have one, um, so I'm not sure what we could use, uh, here, I'll, I'll make uh, Val Kilmer. All right, there's Val. Uh, let's say we let's take we say we take Val Kilmer and, and put him in. So the water level rises 11 uh, centimeters. We'll do that to Val. 
So the, the, the volume would be base, which is just 42 times 42, right? 42 squared times the height, which is not the full 42 of the container, but really just the height of the object. And so now we have to pull our calculator out and, and do 42 times 42 times 11, and we get 19,404 uh, cubic uh, centimeters, which we now can come take up here and plug in to our formula for density. This looks like it's going to be a really low density. Uh, so 3,000 divided by 19,404. It is um, 0.155, I guess, grams per cubic centimeter. And so hopefully that's the answer we got, which of course we could check, right? Because the answers were in your uh, course back. And uh, yep, look at that, 0.15 grams per cubic centimeter. So that's how you do number 20. Um, I will uh, do one more of these for you on the circles packet. And I guess. Uh, I'll just kind of run through. I probably spent more time on this one than I should have since nobody was really asking questions, but uh, I don't know. Makes me nervous. Makes me nervous. Uh, keep studying hard and try to remember that you know more than you think you do. All right? Good evening.